New York City, Times Square. Meet the Palette Pioneers. These creepy, crawly converts may just have the future of food in the palm of their hands. We're definitely at the cutting edge. Our time has come. Bugs are definitely the future. And they're betting bugs are worth big bucks. Their idea started six months ago in urban slums around the world. Five savvy McGill business students with a social conscience and a vision to feed the world's hungry and compete for a million dollar prize. Come on, you can do it. Gabriel Mott is one of the students who went to places where people already eat insects and bit into a few bugs along the way. It tastes really good. Yeah. Their idea, grow bugs for food for your family and create a distribution network to sell the rest for profit. Maybe I don't eat this, but there's two billion people in the world who do. Mohammed Ashour uh, is hoping to turn his team's idea of bugs into big business. I mean, I don't think we're the first to, uh, to, to, to come up with the idea of, you know, farming insects or anything of that sort. But I definitely think that we're amongst the first to really try to make this into a global, scalable business. For me, I saw insects going in one door and then cash coming out the door. <laughs> and so it was an instant sell for me, and from there we, we just scaled the idea up. And this is what they hope to cash in on, what they're calling the gateway bug. Crickets, easy to raise, easy to eat. Boiled, roasted, ground up, add them to some flour. Shobita Sur is cooking crickets to make protein-packed tortillas. Definitely for developing markets, iron and protein are more difficult to get and are inaccessible. So this is a way of making it more accessible to them. It's um, kind of like olive. Yeah, and it, and it is just because of the cricket. taste it? Sure, go ahead. Okie dokie. Here we go. Kind of nutty. Excited or what? Yeah. At a McGill University food lab, Shobita's tortillas are now under the taste test. She's baked up different versions with different amounts of cricket flour. The red room is designed so the tasters can't see the color, so they can't tell how much critter is in the samples they are about to try. I'm excited to see what people are going to say, what people ranked, how they ranked. The eek factor, I can get over that, yeah. It wasn't totally unpleasant. So this person ate everything, polished, clean. Look at that. Yep, hungry students might have been a factor here, but this is valuable information about how much cricket people can stomach. Squeamish, maybe, but this idea has legs. Down this quiet Montreal street in this tiny apartment, as long as they have like multiple ways to get to things, they're okay. Jacob Zamba builds cricket farms. So this one is a more tricky, like a complicated farm. but Self-enclosed containers that don't take up acres of farmland or loads of feed. Just a shelf where they happily munch on last night's leftover fruit and veggies. Crazy or crazy smart? Why are you doing this? It's kind of odd, isn't it? it definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, the idea is... Um, to kind of find a more sustainable way of, more ethical, a more sustainable and more organic way of producing meat. The UN agrees with Jacob. A recent report says insects are the future of food for a hungry planet. How do you like them cooked? I like, there's two ways. I like them smoked and then I also like them in, in flour form, so in a burger slider or something like that. Jacob is working on a plan to mass produce food grade crickets or selling farms like these so you can grow your own stash. I think I just felt the cricket on my back. Is that possible? Hopefully not. <laughs> I felt something. I would invite you to come and try. This is a cricket kebab. This dish here is kind of um, back to kind of Mexican Tex-Mex uh, taste. Those crickets Jacob grows often end up being the centerpiece of cricket cocktail hours across North America. Cheers! <laughs> in what she calls future food tasting salons, Aruna Handa is trying to take the ick out of insects. I think that the first bite is the hardest, and then after that people go, wow, they both taste pretty good. You could put some cricket flour in the corn cake. Aruna is a bug ambassador of sorts, out to make food like this appetizing. And the verdict? 
Delicious. <laughs> yep, he just ate a meatball made up of ground crickets. The Thai spoons, chopped up crickets. And yes, those are whole crickets on top of that corn fritter. Spicy. A novelty snack? Think again. Crickets and other bugs are up to 10 times more efficient in transforming feed into edible meat. Get ready for it. Eating bugs is our future. I'm talking to the people who are interested in sustainable agriculture. I'm talking to the people who are interested in food experiences. I'm talking to people who've got nutritional interests. All of those people are my intended audience. And in North America, that's a huge, uh, that's a huge audience already. Meanwhile, the McGill team is still researching. Oh, hello. Hi. Trying to figure out how to get the most bug for their buck. They're quite happy like this. Andrew Mott's son is on the team. He was so intrigued by their idea, he offered up his Ottawa basement to grow thousands of crickets for them to figure out when the crickets should be harvested. The greatest weight seems to be uh, around uh, 25 days, something like that. Okay. I think. That's a little bit shorter yeah. than we were it, expecting, actually. Yeah, I think so. Zev Thompson and Jesse Perlstein eat it all up. Every bit helps. The big pitch, the big sell, is just days away. Remember, what's at stake here?